This video is for those students who are interested in taking the class as an honors course. Um, if you look at the bottom of the module screen, you'll see there is a module devoted just to honors projects. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through what honor projects are and how to, how to complete them in order to get honors credit on your transcript. So if you go into the module, it looks very similar to our other modules. And this gives you a nice introduction to what an honors project is for our class. So I think of them as a pretty wonderful opportunity. Um, I think it's a great way for students to really engage in the course material. Uh, because we're humanities, our courses are allow for projects as opposed to just doing a research paper. Um, there are a lot of benefits to the student uh, for taking it. First and foremost, the students are rewarded with $50 per credit hour. Um, working out to be around $150 for doing it. Uh, the college encourages students to take classes as honors, and as a way to reward them, um, there's a stipend given at the end. Um, and then on your transcripts, uh, you will actually get an H designation next to this course, which means that when you're applying to other schools, you can say, oh, I've taken so many courses as an honors student, which looks really great for trying to apply for scholarships or get accepted and those kinds of things. But more so, I think it's just a really great experience. So um, I love doing honors projects with my students. I think it's a great way to engage with students in a different way. Um, oftentimes, we build a better rapport. Uh, to this day, um, I, I still have in contact with many of my honors students over the years. Um, so it's just a really nice way for us to work on the material in a more rich and a more robust way. OK, so like I said, just by doing it, you get $150 uh, stipend. Um, you obviously show a commitment to academic excellence. And your transcript reflects this by saying that you are an honors student. So to help you kind of coach through this process, um, I put together a, a slideshow in order to go through all of the different parts of the honors application. This does not mean you have to do this by yourself. I'm more than happy to walk you through it, um, but I just put the slides together as a nice reference point and as a good visual to kind of walk you through step by step on how to take a class as an honors class, not just for me, but for really any, any teacher at the school that offers. So the first thing we have to do is kind of pre-conference. Now, um, we can do that face-to-face, -face, uh, through virtual media, uh, or just simply through email. And oftentimes, email is the best way to do it. And really in the pre-conference, all you're going to do is tell me that you're interested um, and, and what you might think uh, you might be thinking about doing for the honors project. And then I'll simply respond by saying, okay, um, we're going to start going through the steps, it includes filling out the application and completing the contract, okay? There are two um, kind of files that I've actually put together for you that we need to submit to the honors program for approval. And we usually have a couple of weeks from the beginning of the term to do that, all right? So the first one is the honors application. Um, you simply fill this one out with your contact information. And then there's a list of things to prove that you're in high academic st standing. And you need to just check all those that apply. Even if you have never taken a college class before, or even if you've taken dozens of them, you check all the ones that apply. Um, by not checking one of the boxes, it's sometimes an automatic refusal to the program. So we do our best to make sure that you include all the things that show high academic standing. You'll also need to provide a letter of recommendation. Um, I do not provide letters of recommendation for students I've not had prior to this term. So if I've had you before, I'm happy to write you one. But if I've never had you before, I ask that you find someone else. Um, that could be uh, any mentor, right? So it could be another teacher, professor, a counselor, uh, a minister, uh, an employer, really anybody who's just not related to you and knows, knows you in a more professional capacity, okay? We have to have that letter of rec and we have to have the application submitted um, in order for you to apply. Along with that, we submit the honors contract. And this is uh, an agreement between you and I explaining what you're going to be doing. Now, the, uh, the honors committee can reject these. We want to make sure that we do the best job possible, which is one of the reasons why I put these in the slide. All right. So what you'll do is you'll fill in the, the information up at the top, including your X number, the course title, the course number, all that stuff that you can find in my WCC. 
If you're struggling with any of that, I'm happy to show it to you. And then you'll have to come up with a title. Um, I recommend doing something like this, where you're just going to use one of my, my title starters, and then you fill in the blank with what you're going to be doing and what, uh, what you want to do and demonstrate uh, your excellence in the course. Okay, So you might investigate one of the topics. You might explore one of the topics. You might be creating something. Um, so use one of those to create the title. Okay. Then the first question asks you about the goals. So generally speaking, there are a handful of goals that I, that I have for all of my humanities courses. Um, so what you would do is you just choose one of these goals and you can either copy it verbatim, you can combine them. Uh, so from different goals, you can find pieces of them. Um, you can paraphrase, summarize your own word, words, but that's what you're gonna put in for question one, the goals that you wanna achieve, okay? Then question two, asks you, um, you know, basically, like, what are you going to do, right? So how does this project extend and enhance the course goals that are specified? So what you want to do is you want to say, by doing X, Y, and Z, you are going to do some kind of action, some kind of verb over this topic. So I've got kind of a formula here that you could follow. So you'll answer. So I, you'll, you'll write down, I will answer, and then you'll answer whatever question that is. So I will be doing a painting. I will be creating a collage. I will be making a sculpture. I'll be writing a novel. I'll be writing a book. I'll be writing a poem section. Whatever you choose to do, which will allow you to do something like analyze, compare, differentiate, document, whatever you choose. And then that topic. So what are the course topics? So it could be one of the artists or the philosophers or the cultures that we're studying. Whatever it is, that's what you're investigating. Okay, that's question two. Now, sometimes it's easier to start question two by after completing question three, um, because what format will the project entail, right? That might be important before you can answer question two. So question three is, what are you gonna do? So I've got 60 or so different things that you could choose from. You can do other ones that aren't listed here, but this is just a great way to start kind of a, the ball rolling. So if you're brainstorming, I highly recommend doing a project Although I've had students in the past do papers, and papers are great, that's fine. If you choose to do a paper, they have to be between eight and 10 pages. If you choose to do a project, there's all kinds, and I've gotten all kinds of stuff over the years. Some of these are my favorite things that I've seen students do, right? And they, they range from anything from artistic things, like doing um, uh, you know, a painting or a drawing, or a set of drawings, to collages, to scrapbooking, to videos, um, PowerPoint presentations, original songs, a book of poems that were written, quotes with the meanings behind them, uh, all kinds of stuff. So choose one of these, and then you'll put that in question three, okay? Then in question four, you're just gonna tell us what you need, right? So what are the things that you're gonna need? You're gonna need, if you're doing a painting, you're gonna need paint and brushes. If you're doing a movie, you're gonna need, you know, some kind of way of recording that, like your cell phone or a video camera. Uh, maybe some video editing software, whatever you're going to need to use to create this. We don't provide these tools, but the idea behind the, the, uh, the question is that you're planning ahead and you know what you need. The other thing that I ask you to write in there is the resource for the resources is something very specific to me. So I ask all of my students that are honor students to, to write a two page reflection. It is definitely a reflection. It's more or less like a dialogue between you and I. It does not have to be formal writing in any way. It's truly a reflection. Um, and then I also ask that at some point you share that reflection with me. Um, that means we might meet, or that might mean that you're going to just send it to me through email, and then you're also going to give me like an abstract to it. Okay. So, um, or I, I said email, but I really mean post it in Canvas. Okay. So, those are the reflection pieces that I ask you to also put in there for the resources you need. And I'll tell you, the other thing that'll help is by adding those pieces, um, they, they help make the application stronger. Okay, the last question is question five, which is uh, what insight or skill or ability will the student hope to gain through completing this project? So here are all the skills that I think you learn and over time can master within the humanities courses, okay? So some of the courses focus more primarily on one of the categories, others focus on many of them in general ways. So that's really up to you to decide what you wanna focus on. Um, so in general, the humanities focus on the arts. So all the different kinds of arts that we look at and also how those arts relate to society, 
um, and to culture and to psychology and the philosophies that we use. Okay? Um, the humanities focus on history. So, you know, things about being globally aware or understanding um, how different thinking and, and, and different kinds of um, modes of, of knowing were created throughout history and how that's recorded. Um, we focus on philosophy, so how, how we've looked at right and wrong, how we've looked at creativity on analysis, critical thinking, and wisdom, and all the things that we get out of philosophy. We also primarily focus on society, right? So that's, you know, what do we do in relation to our society? How do we serve? How do we understand digital literacy? You know, how do we understand media? All the different things that you need to do in order to master the skills in uh, throughout doing the honors project, okay? Once you've got questions one through five completed in the contract, as well as the application, you're gonna send those things over to me. I'm gonna review them. I'll sign off on both. And then we're gonna send them into the honors program. Um, this semester that'll be due uh, February 14th. Each semester after that, it's due usually a couple of weeks after the beginning of the term, okay? Um, we'll get that to, to Carrie Wilson. She's the, the uh, secretary for the honors program. We'll make sure that she receives all that information before the deadline, okay? Once you've applied and once you've been accepted, then there are a, a few other things that we're gonna do throughout the term. So the second step will be, I'll do a check-in with you around week eight, and I'll just see how you're doing. Like, have you been working on your project? Have you decided to change your project? Um, because you can absolutely make changes to throughout this process. You're by no means married to what you apply for. Um, we could alter it as long as it kind of stays in the same realm. Um, but I'm going to check in with you and just see how it goes. We might meet via Zoom or via Canvas. We might just talk by email. But I'm going to check in with you. I'm going to ask that we know um, that I know what you are doing and where you're at. And sometimes people say, I got the answer here and I'm not leading very far on this. That's okay. That's why I'm doing it. Okay. Then by the end of week 13, you're going to want to finish that project and you're also want to finish um kind of writing the reflection okay so the first step is completing the project so the steps for that are beginning that brainstorming and working through the process then start planning and collecting materials then executing by making building designing whatever you're going to do and finally evaluating and making sure you've made it the best you possibly make it right so at the end of week 13 you should have gone through all of those steps you'll use that project and those steps to finish the last piece, which is writing your reflection. Okay, so in your two-page reflection, some some questions you might answer are, you know, what did you do? How did you do it, and why? Um, you know, what did you learn? How is this different than things you've done in the past? How much you do differently the next time you do it? What did you enjoy most? What did you struggle with most? Why do you think that was? And, and what did the project tell you about yourself? How do you know? What connections can you make? Do you have to answer all those questions? Absolutely not. Those are just guiding questions to help you reflect and do a, re a really truthful reflection on the process. Then once you've done your reflection in your project, you'll submit both to me. Um, we may do a final conference. That might mean that you just send me an email along with everything and kind of summarizing what you've done. Um, that might mean that we meet. Uh, that might mean that we have a conversation via Zoom or for, via Canvas. Whatever it means is, we're gonna wrap the whole process up and we're gonna make sure that all the materials are ready and can be sent off to the honors program, okay? I really love doing these. These are some of the most favorite things that we need to do as a um, teacher and student. So I really hope you take advantage of it. Um, to, in order to complete everything, you'll go into the honors module, all at the bottom down here. Um, here is the application form. I've combined both forms into one. They're very easy to use. You'll just simply download them and then you'll go through and fill out uh, the little blue form fields. So if you look here, you'll see, if you once you download this, you can fill in all of these fields and check all the boxes and sign everything. And then you can simply email this to me and I will um, compile it and send it off to Carrie. Once you are done with the, pro with the project, once you're done with the process, you will submit both your project and your reflection here in Canvas. So here's where you'll submit your project. So you'll just take images or screenshots of whatever you've created. Um, if it's a, a physical thing, 
Um, you know, several different angles is great. Uh, if it's a virtual thing or a digital thing, just go ahead and send those screenshots in. Um, and you can submit as many images as you want. Then you'll also submit your reflection right here, just like you do for any other writing assignment in the course, okay? If you have any questions about this, or if you need any more kind of advice on whether or not you should do it, please, please, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to walk you through it, talk you through it. Um, and like I said, it's one of my favorite things I get to do with students. Uh, so go ahead and take a look at this. If you've got questions, feel free to email me. All right, thank you.